Greetings Earthlings, today we're looking at a super cardioid handheld condenser microphone. What? So today we are reviewing this guy, the Shure Beta 87A, which as I mentioned, is a super cardioid handheld electric condenser microphone. If you do want to pick this guy up, it will set you back around $250. Like always, links down below. And for this review, I got the mic connected directly to the 2i2 second gen, 48 volts on and my gain set at around 3 o'clock. Not going to do any post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. First up, you will get a zippered carrying pouch. You do obviously get the microphone. You get a microphone clip, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, and a cable tie. You also get some documentation, and you get a sticker, but to be honest, I don't feel well enough to convey my disgust with that. Now when we get to the build quality, like all Shure microphones, this thing does feel pretty good as well as it should, given that it is a stage microphone. It does have an all metal body, a metal grill, and it feels like a decent amount of weight. Feel like I'm getting a bit redundant by saying that in almost every single review but that's pretty much it for the build quality. Then when we look at the specs, this thing has a super cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of negative 52 and a half decibels, an impedance of 150 ohms, a self noise of 23.5 decibels, and a phantom power requirement of plus 11 to plus 52 volts. Now I'm spinning around the Beta 87A to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. We will go around to probably the deadest area on the microphone. It's how it sounds from here. Going around to the exact rear of the microphone. Going to the other dead area in the microphone's polar pattern. Going to the second 90 degree angle. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now I'm passing the microphone back and forth between my hands to show you how well it does at rejecting handling noise. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Now I'm right on top of the microphone to show you the proximity effect of this thing. One foot away from the microphone, two feet from the microphone, and about four feet away from the mic. Now let's test the plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Okay, just to show you the self noise of the Beta 87A, I have the Shure SM58 connected directly to the interface. I'll be quiet and let you hear the noise floor. Then I'll go ahead and switch the cable directly over to the 87A, make no adjustments, and let you hear that as well. I'm sure I've got febrile delirium And I don't know what's going on inside my head Seriously, I feel like crap. Can't even say crap right. <laughs> my god, it's a condenser microphone that you can use on the stage. First up, in terms of pros, this microphone did incredible at handling noise rejection. It also did a very good job at background noise rejection. And also, the roll-off to the bass is really beneficial if the talent that you're miking or if you don't have the best microphone technique. But then in terms of cons, this microphone has a surprisingly low output for a condenser microphone and the high self noise of 23.5 decibels almost removes it completely from the possibility of studio use. That's just way too high. 
Then as far as my overall thoughts, on the electric guitar, I thought it had a very crunchy tone while completely avoiding any kind of muddiness due to that big roll-off starting at 500 hertz, which is actually exactly what you would want for an electric guitar in a full mix. Then on the acoustic guitar, I thought it sounded a bit too thin, even when we mic'd the instrument very close to the sound hole, so I don't think it's really cut out for that instrument unless you're putting that acoustic guitar in a full mix and you want to avoid any kind of clashing of the frequencies below 500 hertz. For singing, this microphone is very, very bright. It's got that gradual boost that peaks around 5.5 kilohertz, which makes it pop out of a mix, but then it also has this big boost around around 9 kilohertz, which makes it very airy, very open, and very crispy sounding. And lastly, for spoken word, this microphone definitely has a lot of detail and clarity to it due to that 9 kilohertz boost, but it can sound a bit too thin on the voice unless you have a very bassy voice or unless you get right on top of the microphone and utilize the proximity effect to fix some of that 500 hertz roll off. And now, would I recommend this microphone? Yeah, and I'm saying that because to my knowledge, there aren't many stage condenser microphones out there, and the ones that do exist, like from Neumann, can get very expensive. So this is a relatively cheap way to get that condenser tone for your stage use, meaning it does have a lot of detail and clarity, and it extends all the way up to 20 kilohertz. All right, guys, well, that's gonna do it for today. So if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. My voice is going. If you hated it, thumbs down. Want more videos? Subscribe, logo beneath me. If you wanna support the channel, you can now become a member by clicking that join button, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.